Kilkenny taking that first step towards what they hope will be an All-Ireland win in six years waiting under Brian Cody. Well, he's named a side full of experience. One championship newcomer, though, and Derek Corcoran at wing back. He'll be helped by players of the calibre of Owen Murphy, Hugh Lawler and Borick Walsh, who've done it all before at this level. There are three late changes, one in midfield with Richie Lahey joining Richie Reid, who finally makes his first championship start seven years after joining the panel. There are two switches to the half forward line, Mossy Keown and Alan Murphy both in from the start and having been sidelined last season with a knee injury the team was captained by 21 year old Adrian Mullen the attack is always led by TJ Reid who racked up 118 against Wexford in the league seven weeks ago well Wexford certainly flexed their muscles in their demolition of Leash last weekend Davy Fitzgerald has named the same 15 13 of which started that Leinster final in 2019 Goalkeeper Mark Fanning, fullback Liam Ryan, and joint captain Matty O'Hanlon provide a rock solid spine to the team. Lee Chin joins Jim with O'Keefe and Nemo McGovern in that middle third, but Rory O'Connor and Connor McDonald were relied upon for the bulk of the scores. In the corner, Mikey Dwyer retains his place, having made his championship debut against Leash. While Kevin Foley will wear 15, but will spend most of his time likely covering the full back line in that sweeper role. Well, as Davey was saying, it's great to have the fans back and it's also great to see these two men in the sideline again, Brian Cody and Davey Fitzgerald, as we hear our Ronda V in a Croke Park. match referee Fergal Horn of Tipperary took charge of Kilkenny's last championship game that All-Ireland semi-final defeat to Waterford in November that was a thrilling game let's hope for more of the same we've already seen a shock this afternoon with Dublin beating Galway in the first of today's Leinster championship semi-finals this is the second of three of our championship triple header here in Sky Sports this afternoon don't forget Limerick and Cork still to come as Kilkenny look to break the deadlock just seconds after the throw-in and that's exactly what they have done the opening score of the day coming from Richie Reid, his first ever score at Championship Purling and Anthony Nash it took less than 10 seconds to arrive. A yeah, great score, it was interesting to throw in there that Wexford had no man inside in the Kilkenny 45, so they pushed up to try and win the throw and fired back against them and a great score there from Kilkenny to settle the nerves. Here's the Wexford joint captain, Mandy O'Hanlon, dispossessed on that far side but will be a line ball for Wexford. weather conditions have improved considerably from what they were like a bit earlier on when we had a lot of rain a lot of wind as well but it's much drier the sun is even making an attempt to peek out from behind the clouds here in North Dublin lovely bit of play from TJ Reid another dispossession to his credit for Kenny looking to build on that good start across it comes to Paddy Deegan who's done very well to pull that down from the air a man from the Lachlan Gales Club just outside Kilkenny City. Long direct ball in and it's very well dealt with by Simon Donoghue. Almost lost it on his way out. Here's Lee Chin. Can't get around the back though of Owen Cody. Cody from the All-Ireland Club champions, Valley Hill Shamrocks, doesn't get the contact on that he would have liked. And through it goes to Mark Fanning. With the slow, methodical, deliberate build up. Lee Chin trying to find some space for Rory O'Connor. Taking him on in the opening exchanges is Connor Brown. O'Connor's found the space for the shot. It's an acute angle. And what a way to open Eurocade. It's a cracking score, and we're level. That's a great score there from Rory O'Connor. 
Wexford have really kind of packed the middle toward here and there's no forward again inside the 45 for a while there and it just seems to be a tactic that they try to persist with. Kilkenny got some turnovers there already early on so it just looks like the middle third is going to be a very interesting battle. See who regains the, the possession the most. And kind of picking up from where he left off against Leach which he scored 1-4. There is Foley wearing 15 but he'll be playing in front of his full back line. A lot of bodies around that middle third. It's a real scrum in there at the moment. But can he bring it away through Dara Corcoran? And pressed so much for Ballyhale on their run to the All-Ireland title last year. And he's getting his chance at senior inter-county level now. Not the best or cleanest of strikes from Adrian Mullen. So three minutes in, a couple of scores on the board already. And he's got a very good record against Kilkenny, David Fitzgerald. He's come out on top on eight occasions. In 14 games against Kilkenny while Wexford manager Brian Cody has been managing against Wexford for 23 years now it's his 106th championship match in charge he was there before you even began your career Anthony uh, he's one of the greatest of all time I remember meeting him for the first time I played college hurling with his son and uh, you know I'd only seen him on TV at the time and next he walked up to shake my hand and <laughs> I had to look up a fair distance to meet him I toy he's a he's a big man he's a um, imposing figure on the sideline for that many years here is TJ Reid 118 in that league meeting which was one in double digit scores by Kilkenny seven weeks ago now 334 in just three championship games in 2020 it's untypical of him to fire that to the right and wide, the first wide of the game. We saw in the first game, Joe Canning, and then place falls for Galway, had a bit of trouble with the elements in that first half. TJ Reid not finding the target with his first attempt. Here come Wexford again now. Given up by Limo McGovern, it's fallen kindly though for Leach in who just had a quick peek at the post, decided it was well within his range, and that looks like a pretty good decision. It's a great score. Davy seems to encourage him to take the long shots when it's not on, and in fairness, they have some serious talent leech in there with a great score. It's often difficult to get a grab on the wind here at Croke Park, but we do feel like it's heading in towards Hill 16, behind the backs of these Wexford players in this first half. Miscontrol there by Paul Morris, gathered by Tommy Walsh. And there's his cousin, Porig Walsh now. Lovely bit of feeling and a chance now for Kilkenny and Owen Cody off the post and wide. Well, the referee was playing advantage for the Ballyhale man. Kilkenny will still leave with the score, but it could have been so much more. That's the one thing that might unlock this Wexford defence is if we can gain a possession. If they can gain possession um, directly into hand and take on their man, they'd only two on two inside there. The sweeper wasn't back far enough there. He's fierce and lucky just off the post and out for, out for um, well, the advantage of being played, as you said. Interesting one there just before that, Simon O'Donoghue, when the last player Lee Ching got the score. Simon O'Donoghue named the cornerback, was up in the opposite 45 looking for the pass. Wexford seemed to just abandon their, their shape at times just to get the overlapping run. Cody, the reigning young hurler of the year, didn't get his score, but TJ Reid has his. And it's Settler right in front of the post for him after that early miss. Great to see the supporters, young and old, back at Croke Park. And it's been too long without them. As Mark Fanning, now 30 years of age, so experienced, his 35th championship appearance, gets Wexford back up and running. And it goes to Kevin Foley. And he sends it long. Down on top of that inside forward line, Mikey Dwyer in there as well, as was Paul Morris. But Kilkenny had the numbers. Deegan now. And Kilkenny, like Wexford, going direct. Two on one in Wexford's favour, but the numbers aren't counting for them. It's a brilliant piece of defending, though, from Foley, who somehow got the block in, and that Owen Cody goal bound effort. That's an incredible block there, and that's the ball again that I spoke about. Kilkenny direct ball in, and Cody has a great hand and opened up another goal scoring opportunity. Well, if ever we saw the importance of the sweeper, that was it right there. It looked like he'd been beaten. Here's Shane Reck now. Determination as he broke that first tackle. And Wexford looking for another score from long range, and they have it as well. It's a really good score, delivered from midfield by Dermot O'Keefe. Yeah, they got a lot of long-range scores against Leach last week. Leach allowed them to have the puck out short, and they were just shooting from distance. As I said earlier, they don't seem to have a fear. But what a great tackle here. 
That's a, that's a very brave block there from uh, Kevin Foley and a definite goal scoring block. Michael Kelly looking to respond immediately. And Richie Reid with his second. He's only ever played once in Championship Purling. It was back in 2017 off the bench. And spent much of his time, Anthony, on this Kilkenny panel as a sub goalkeeper. Yeah, Patrick Horgan slagged me as soon as I just come outside the small square. It was like a fish out of water. So he seems to be a lot better of uh, multitasking himself in one Murphy. He's done a lot of his damage over the years in club hurling out the field for Bally Hale, and now he's strutting his stuff on the biggest stage and into county level. Again, Wexford bring that ball away from that rock. Leach in such strength and physicality. Few will beat him in a battle on the ground, and it should be an opportunity for Wexford to take the lead again. He managed to drive himself through those Kilkenny bodies, and he's going to take this free himself. Nine points in that Leinster decider two years ago. Already with one from play. That low trajectory straight over the black spot. A second for him. In the first semi final took a little bit of time to hot up. A pretty good start here. Again, Kilkenny getting the better of Wexford in those aerial duels down in that Wexford full back line. Mullen now. Full speed and power and tricks as well. He's such a talent at such a young age. That may be overturned as he flung Dermot O'Keefe out of his way. And the referee is going to throw that up, but Brian Cody won't be pleased with that, Anthony. No, but Kilkenny seemed to be getting uh, opportunities of goals there. It was a last ditch tackle from Sean Murphy, and then eventually a foul that stopped Adrian Mullen from getting through. And I'm sure Davy Fitz won't be overly happy with that either. Like without the foul there, he was in on goal again, so it'll be something they're looking at. I thought the referee had signalled that he was going to throw that ball in, but it is a another chance for TJ Reid. now just one point short of 50 in championship purling against Wexford, TJ Reid, and we're level again. Fanning goes short, but Kenny allowing Wexford these short puckouts and then engaging them as Reid tried to do there, Q and Liam Ryan rather. And the referee was playing an advantage for Wexford. Well, it was a dismal championship, Anthony, for Wexford last season. They never got out of first gear and really surrendered that Leinster title rather meekly. Will Davy Fitzgerald be pleased by this start they've made here? Absolutely. Like I think this is a, it's a big year for Wexford with the talk that we've had over the winter. Was Davy staying or going? And you know, I think they're going to look. They still talk that it might be his last year down there, but they, like they've bought in so well. He's done such a great job in them. Um, the one thing for me there in the sharp puckouts is is like Kilkenny are allowing Wexford um, have the ball. And when they work it out to midfield, they're allowing them into scoring range, but the intensity compared to Leach last week is far superior. So it, it, should be, um, it should be an interesting tactic there to see how it falls out for the game. Well, it certainly looks likely that any fouls committed by Kilkenny defenders are going to be punished. Leach in looks to be very much in the mood here. Ten and a half minutes into this first half. Here is TJ Reid getting the other side of Matty O'Hanlon. And looking for an option inside, flicked away brilliantly by Shane Wreck. Another quality piece of defending from that Wexford full back line. They'll have more defending to do now, though. And still, Kenny look for an opening. Back out it goes to Richie Lahey. A made addition to this starting 15. Tommy Walsh looking for a pass, but he's closed down. Paul Morris now has it. And the chance for Rory O'Connor looking for his second both from underneath the Cusick stand. A Wexford lead by two. Oh, that's a fantastic score, and that all started with Shane Ricks putting his body in the line to stop a guaranteed goal again. Another latch ditch tackle from Wexford. It's great defending, but they will still be worried about the amount of opportunities Kilkenny are getting in close to goal. O'Connor who lost provincial finals on minor and 21 level to Kilkenny over the years. That's broken out to Lee Chin. Hands off the challenge of TJ Reid and changes the angle of this Wexford attack. Now, Liam McGovern. 
He's looking to follow Rory O'Connor's example. He maybe doesn't quite have the ability from that sort of range as the inside forward. Kenny going long with those pockets. Foley now. And it's away from Mossy Kill. And Simon Donahue. They're just going through the lines pretty easily now, Wexford. Settling into this familiar pattern of play, but knowing what they'll bring to the game and dealing with it, often two very different things. Leach in. Set up on by Billy Ryan, and he just opted for the pass this time. Chin mixing it up, putting O'Hanlon into the space, and Re Wexford are starting to motor now. They're working the ball through the line because, again, they've only one player inside the 45, which means they have the extra bodies to work it through the hands. And they're really persisting with that. I've, I've never come across that before as a player. When we played them, they always had one or two inside. But they're really persisting with the extra bodies in midfield today. It's the fourth ever point in the championship for Mario Hanlon. Looked to be a foul, and Simon Donahue, but play continues. Cross it goes to Sean Murphy. Flicks it towards O'Connor. He's off his left side this time. And he hasn't managed to come up with the same result. Second wide of the game for Wexford. There is Owen Murphy now. Man with four Ireland medals tucked away. Two of them in the field of play. Two watching on from the bench. That looked to be a foul on Billy Ryan, who had half a shirt in the hands of a Wexford defender. And the referee does come back for another foul. And it'll be another opportunity for TJ Reid. And that has not gone down well with the Wexford manager. His fifth season in charge now, facing Kilkenny in the championship with three different counties after Clare and Kilkenny on Waterford, or Clare, Waterford and Wexford, rather. Reid looking for his third. Scored 19 points across the two meetings in 2019. This nice Drew in the Leinster round robin stage. Wexford out coming out on top in that final. There's Foley. And they'd saunter out with that ball. And that's a foul on Rory O'Connor. Not a decision that Hugh Lawler agrees with. Rory O'Connor's after a great start to the game. He's a very influential player for Wexford. You're talking about Lee Chin, Conor McDonald, and Rory O'Connor. If the three of them can fire, they're the three best hurlers in the country. So Rory's after having a great start to the game so far. Well, the last five championship meetings of these sides have resulted in two wins apiece and one draw. It's a real shift in the balance of power in this fixture that was previously dominated by Kilkenny. They'd won the previous seven. And then that shock win in 04. A smashing grab from Wexford, the outlier in that period. Another one over by Lee Chin, who's already got four. So again, Wexford pressing high, going man for man. And watching as Kilkenny send this one long. Almost taken by Matty O'Hanlon. for supremacy on the deck over there. In the sunshine now, thankfully, at Croke Park. Adrian Mullen almost had it on his early. And he's still scrapping away in there in the end. It's a line ball for Wexford. Going back to that stat of the 2-1-2. Two, two. Davy Fitz came in around in and introduced this system, which was a very difficult system to play against, you know. Um, and the shift of Horsens have come with that as well, in fairness, and we have to give him credit for that. Kenny beat them by a point in the group stage in 2018, but Wexford also beat them in 2017 in Davies' first season in charge. A memorable night in the sunshine down at Wexford Park. And all the way back to their goalkeeper, Mark Fanning, now. Eight years on since his championship debut against Dublin. This is Donahue. Next foot on by Connor McDonald, who hasn't seen much of the ball. It's been all Leach in and Rory O'Connor. 
But maybe Mikey Dwyer will now have a say in this Wexford attack, being buffeted and harried from left and from right. And it's still there for Wexford. Out it comes to Morris. He just takes a backward step but goes the wrong side of that left-hand post. Great determination there, but great defending from Kilkenny as well. Like with the new rule in, if he'd have gone to ground there, penalty potentially, yellow card. So they, they were very disciplined there and holding him up and making him play the pass at the end. Kilkenny can't get this one at the first time of asking, but they may have an opportunity now as Billy Ryan breaks into the space, got a call off his shoulder from Adrian Mullen. And the captain gets his first score of this Leinster semi-final. And there is the first water break. We've had 14 scores in 18 minutes. It's been really entertaining stuff. Let's get the early thoughts of our panellists. Yeah, look, at I think in the first quarter there, uh, I think Kilkenny are failing to kind of get to the pitch of it so far. I think Wexford, you know, deserved their two-point lead. I've been impressed with Wexford composure. I think they, ha they made a couple of scores there where they recycled the ball a couple of times, and that was excellent from Wexford. So, as Davy as Davy said before the game, we have to stick to the plan uh, or else or else uh, it, it, we're, we're doomed. So, uh, I think Wexford are doing that, and I think they deserve their two-point lead. Just from the Kenny point of view, they're going along with the puck outs as well, and they're getting a bit of joy from it. Oh, Cody grabbed a couple of balls. I was unlucky, and lucky again, we're talking about the benefits of the sweeper. Kevin Foley was between Owen Cody and the goal as well, and for that, he was two stri strikes straight and through and goal. So, luckily, Kenny will have to up their work rate. Lee Chin is having a big influence on the game. I think Wexford are looking for him at every occasion because he's strong enough to break the tackle as well. And, and Kilkenny are, are conceding a few frees, which Lee is scoring as well. Special mention of Rory, Rory O'Connor as well, um, had two brilliant points under the sideline, missed one. It actually, these are opportunity he missed. So, again, before the game, we needed them, Lee Chin, Rory Connor, to have a big game and to have a, a big 17 minutes so far. So, up to Kenny to counteract this. Okay, Ali and Jamesy, who are in situ in Semple Stadium ahead of this evening's clash of Limerick and Cork in the Munster Hurling Championship. The focus on Leinster here. Wexford looking to set up a first Leinster final meeting with Dublin in 60 years. And they're two points to the goal here at the moment, an awful long way to go. Here is O'Hanlon. Space to move into. Can you feel just need to up the intensity a little? That was a lazy pull coming in from Richie Lahey there. And he may well end up in the book after that. And he certainly felt it, Rory O'Connor. Yeah, it looks like a sign of frustration, really, for Kilkenny. Wexford are getting their sharp puck outs, and normally when a full back line player gets the ball, he's getting it on the 21, but they're actually setting up near the 45. So every time they're getting possession, it's one pass and they're back out to midfield. So they're on the front foot, and I think that's a, it's a great tactic. They come in close together, last second split, and then Mark Fanning's picking off one of them. We missed that All-Ireland semi-final defeat to Waterford last year with injury. Richie Lange also had a hamstring problem in the early rounds of the leagues this year, but fully fit and able to play his part here today. This was the foul. He said a little go at him as he went beyond him. And it afforded Lee Chin another chance to add to his ever-increasing tally. And he has been error-free, Lee Chin. And as long as Kilkenny keep giving him the chances, he'll likely continue to do that. The lead is three. spine of this Pro Park field. Oh, Kenny have done well in at least breaking most of those balls in the air. That took a nick on the way through. It will be a 65 off the effort of Owen Cody. Just before that puck, Owen Murphy took his two hands there, and all of a sudden, all the Kilkenny players come into the middle. It's obviously a worked on puck out, and it's something that they might need to do, just get the ball to ground, fight for it, because there's no better team than Kilkenny in a rock scenario. So maybe something like that might be helpful, rather than isolating a one and two, unfortunately, with Wexford, with Foley around the place. So at least they have a chance for 65 in the score. I should have kept this man very quiet in open play so far. Oh, that early miss. He's found his range pretty quickly. And that is his fourth. Now 33 years of age, the genius that is TJ Reid. 
they still rely very heavily upon him. Although a lot of young talent in and around him now. Fanning down on top of Lee Chin, who's scrapping with Dara Corcoran for it. Chin comes out with the ball, but without his hurley. He needs to improvise, and that's exactly what he does. Morris looking for a shooting opportunity. Flings it almost in the direction of Mikey Dwyer. And Dwyer has pulled that across the face of the post and wide. Murphy wastes no time in getting the game back up and running. Looking for a chance was Mullen. And a chance maybe of a goal here for Kilkenny and stretching for it was Mossy Joe. A little too much weight on the hand pass into him. So it can build between the lines again. A bit of space in front of now for Conor McDonald, who's been kept very quiet. This could be the spark he needs to get into this game. And they're a little unsure, the two umpires, so we will go to Hawkeye for the first time in this opening half. You feel, Anthony, McDonald could do with this one. He's been on the fringes thus far. Yeah, like both TJ Reid and Conor McDonald have probably haven't had the open play games that they've, they've wanted, especially TJ Reid there. The goal scoring opportunity there, it's an interesting thing there. Like before games, the referees come up and tell goalkeepers that if it's wide or low, go faster. So that puck could actually came from Owen Murphy a lot faster, which didn't allow Wexford to set up. And he's exactly given it there, so that is good for Conor McDonald. Well, 2 4 against Leash, Conor McDonald. He's up and running now, 22 minutes into this first half. They've re-established that three-point lead. Looking for this one as Alan Murphy. And Mac McDonald hasn't seen much of the ball so far. Spinning into the space really well was the man we've just mentioned. McDonald's got into this game. Murphy has now as well. And the lead is back to two. Interesting to see this pick up. It was either an exceptional one or an illegal one, but he was inside in a rock of players there. You couldn't see it there in the replay either. Great pick up and a great score. And uh, like Connor a while ago, it's good for him too to get on the scoreboard. His top score. Right back, brilliant right Kenny Minor side that won the All Ireland seven years ago. Now the years have gone very quickly since. Oh, One ball for the Cats. It'll be taken by Paddy Deegan. Under the nose of his manager, Brian Cody. Deegan was a mere three years old when Brian Cody took the reins. That's Kilkenny manager. TJ Reid. Flick behind, looking for Owen Cody. That's really good work from Shane Rack. It feels from the Kilkenny fourth that he'd fouled the ball on his way through. Mikey Dwyer. And that's a three at four Wexford. Kevin Foley, strange to see number 15 so far back the field, but in fairness to him, he's after sitting right into that position, and he's a great attribute for, for Wexford to have. The importance about a sweeper, I suppose, is that positional sense, but also being able to hurl the ball, especially for Wexford. The way they work the ball out the field, and in fairness to him, he's after having a good start to the game, some great tackling, but also on the ball, he's so influential, and even when the when the ball is dead, he's organising the other players to set up for the puck and stuff, so he's having a, he's having a great influence in the game here. And in that run, he's likely to see more of the ball than any other Wexford defender, isn't he? Has to be able to play make as well as get himself into those defensive positions. Here's Mark Fanning. We saw Alan Nolan with a couple of brilliant scores on the goalkeeping position for Dublin. Mark Fanning looking to do likewise. That wind is just coming over his right shoulder, and we could see it there. And that is Wexford's fifth wide. He got one against Leash. He does have two, three from place balls in his senior career, Mark Fanning. Wexford fouling as that ball was dropping in off that Owen Murphy puck out, spotted by the referee. And TJ Reid will have a chance to make it a one-point game with 10 minutes remaining in this opening half. Yeah, it was just a quick tug there. He's actually looking at him and he's coming out. Quick pull there um, by Liam Ryan. And look, you don't want to give TJ Reid these opportunities. And just to go back to Mark Fanning's one there, it's just that, that just shows the difficulty and the brilliance of TJ Reid and Lee Chin so far today about their freezing. There's something that shouldn't go kind of like, you know, unwarranted either. A free taker is so important to each team. So Reid in the hunt for a 10th Leinster Senior Championship medal this season. Kenny, the reigning champions, he had a big part to play in that last year, and that is his fifth. 
I just hate standing in goals for TJ Reid's frees because they're so low and directed. <laughs> if you ever miss hit one, you're kind of you're panicking. That's just coming under the crossbar, but he's such a beautiful striker. And never really clear more than a couple of yards over that back spot. A lot of air on this one from Fanning. And on top of Chin. Almost scandaled by Gavin Bailey. Shunted over the sideline. It certainly appeared to be the case with Mikey, Mikey Dwyer, but the linesman on that side. But he was still on the field of play. Drilled in towards the Kilkenny forwards. A clever play from Simon Donner, who just let the ball beat his body, knowing there was green grass in behind. Some of the decision making from the Wexford fullbacks in this first half have been excellent. That's poor, though. And will it be punished? It certainly will. Well, a mistake from Murphy and taking full advantage was Owen Cody for his first. Yeah, in fairness, the way the Wexford hurled are going to give up one or two, like, and they won't panic. It was just an unfortunate strike there with some great defending by Simon O'Donnell, a great play to, to, to usher it around the corner to himself. Blame Murphy, he was blameless. It was Paul Morris that gave the ball away. Over this time from Fanny. Spilled over by McDonald. Reid helps it inside, where it's gathered by Mossy Keown. The call from Owen Cody, he's just got his first of the game. And he's doubled his tally inside another 60 seconds. He's starting to motor now as well. It's not like Conor McDonald to drop the ball like that. It was a great fuck, well worked as well. And you can see when Kilkenny do get the, the ball and broken play, they're well to work it up the field and a great score. No gun kind of point to hit. Kilkenny hit the front for the first time in this game. Four in a row from the Leinster champions. Brilliant take from Lee Chin, leading by example with his side, just on the back foot at the moment. And it's well stopped by Owen Murphy. It did look like it was going to have enough to make it all the way. Murphy launches one inside, and it's caught brilliantly by O'Hanlon. Some excellent fielding in this first half from both sides. Here's Gavin Bailey. Turning into the tackle was Lee Chin, but he spun away from Richie Reid. And he's left him for dead as well, Lee Chin. Deceptively quick, this guy. Good vision as well. Gathered by McDonald. And the referee is going to have to bring a hold to the play. And there was a collision just after Lee Chin laid that ball off. McDonald didn't have the chance to pull the trigger. The referee may well be showing a second yellow card of this first half. And Wexford will be absolutely desperate for Lee Chin to come away from this knock on scathe, Anthony. He is so important. What a passage play there, in fairness. Like, Lee Chin's catch, like, that's unbelievable. Like, it's a skill that, I wouldn't say has gone out of the game, but, you know, isn't as evident as it used to be. On Murphy's great skill to bring it down. Then Matthew O'Hanlon on the other side catching the ball. And then you see the brilliance of Lee Chin. Lee Chin's skill is phenomenal, but it's his, it's his athleticism, his strength, his power, and takes a heavy knock here, now, and hopefully he'll get back up and uh, ready to go, because all, you can hear the gasp from the Wexford supporters there, now, when, when you see the hit. It's a big hit, and Paddy Deegan's a big, strong man with him. It's a shoulder to the chest of Lee Chin, but you have to ask where was Paddy Deegan supposed to go when Lee Chin is motoring at you. It's hard to get out of the way. Not that Deegan would be looking to do so, but he's on a yellow now for the remainder of this game. But in full flow, Anthony, he doesn't look like he's motoring, but my God, did he get away from the Kilkenny cover there. He is, he's an absolute, like, even to stand beside him on the field, he's an absolute athlete, like, you know, he's in, um, and, and, like, we all talk about his skills and everything like that, but it's just the energy the, and the distance he covers in the field, but uh, he's just so important to Wexford, like, he, I think, look, he is Wexford's the man that makes him tick, like, so it's good to see him back up and at it again. And while he was getting some treatment, Paul Morris, the depth free taker himself, top responsibility, that's his first. Level again, approaching the half-hour mark. He's Bit of stick work initially there from Mossy Keown, but he gave it away when he was needed to pass. It found its way to Connor McDonald, and he gets his second. The big three Wexford forwards now are starting to kick in. No fair. Lee Chin, Connor McDonald, Rory O'Connor, and that's a massive score. Like again in windy conditions, great score from Connor. And Kilkenny have funneled into that middle part of the field. Like Simon Donahue's way. The call from O'Hanlon. And now McDonald seeing a bit more of the ball, which should only spell danger for Kilkenny and their defenders. Rory O'Connor, all 
Well, his efforts have been over on that Cusick stand side. He's three from three from that exact area in the field, Anthony, and that is incredible accuracy. Oh, he's having an uh, unbelievable sack of the game, and it's the only team you ever see to play a ball over the top to a forward. They pull him so far out, and he is just um, unbelievable. They're great scores, like, and again, to feel the wind up here just to show the skill level it takes to put it over. Three on the spin now for Wexford, and this time Kilkenny went long with the puck out, went short rather, and Reid with maybe a goal opportunity. The referee had his hand in the air, the ball did end up going over the bar, and it is a one point game again. That's what Kilkenny need to get TJ Reid into the game, it was a great take here. Just interesting to see, was he fouled? He went to ground under a foul, maybe, maybe, maybe a bit harsh. And he came away with the score in the end. Fanning down the middle, spotted the run of Conor McDonald. Again, it comes off the palm of his hand. And last time that happened, it led to a Kilkenny score. And here's Dara Corker, his first taste of senior championship hurling today. Turning into the space is Mossy Keown. Well, that's twice now. McDonald's had a chance, Anthony, to gather off a Fanning puck out, and twice it's ended up over his own crossbar. Yeah, and it was the same. I was going to comment on TJ Reid before he caught the last one. The two of them were so similar. They're trying extremely hard, and the boat all over the field. The ball's just spilling away. And unfortunately for Connor, the both times it has spilled away from Kilkenny have punished it and gotten two good scores. Cody rolls it onto the glass of his hair. And sees a lot of space down that left hand side. Huge chance now for Kilkenny. And it's saved by Fanning. Well, Alan Murphy disgusted he hasn't sent that into the back of the net. And a really important stop from the Wexford number one. Crucial minutes now before the break. McDonald finds Rory O'Connor. Gavin Bailey, who was very well tackled by Adrian Mullen. This is Billy Ryan and Greg Valley Callan. Trying to get away from Shane Rack, who put in a really good tackle. The referee keeping the whistle to himself, didn't see anything untoward there, and the challenges have been given and taken. Oh, this is proper championship hurling. Simon Donahue now, hooked oh, brilliantly by Richie Lahey. And the ball is changing hands frequently. Deegan's ball down. It was taken well by Alan Murphy. Hunting this one down is Massey Keown. This time the referee does spot a foul from Liam Ryan. And it'll be an opportunity for Reid to put Kilkenny back in front. That passage of play put a smile on your face, but it's also the reason I'm a goalkeeper. <laughs> there were some serious hits going in there. It was great play. Kilkenny would be disappointed didn't have a goal just before it, though. You know, it was a great opportunity there. And I just don't think he struck it well, and it almost looked like Mark Fanning tried to catch it. It was a great save and worked it out, but that's a great passage play, and as you mentioned there, that's championship, and that give, might give the game a right good lift now. Jerry looking for his seventh. And over it goes. 26 scores in 34, 27 scores in 34 minutes of championship hurling. And Cody knows that his side are in a real battle here. As is always the case when these two counties have met over the recent years. To go back to 97 for the last time, Wexford won back to back championship meetings with Kilkenny. That great Wexford side of the 90s under Liam Griffin. And won two Leinster titles in an All Ireland. It was a nice flick from Conor McDonald, but there was no one waiting for it. The last few seconds of a pulsating first half. Long ball in again, and another brilliant piece of feeling. We can have a highlight reel of its very own from the aerial jewels in this first half. Great hook and Liam Oak McGovern. But he regathers and finds Bailey. Bailey off his left side. And it's brilliantly dealt with by Owen Murphy. One additional minute. The first half, you don't really want to end. Richie Reid, looking to guide one in towards Mullen, the two Bally Hale men combining. On his hands and knees was Connor Brown. This is Cody. 
Oh, the whole way was Rory O'Connor of all people. A full forward and a corner forward. Owen Cody comes out on top and that's his third. What a star in the making this man is, just 20 years of age. It's hard to believe he's that age, he's been around so long with Ballyhale Shamrocks. But Kilkenny will be delighted, they're two points ahead and they've, all, they've already created two or three good chances for goals as well. And the way Wexford have hurled, it's, it's looking, it just took me a second to look at the scoreboard and realise Kilkenny have gone two ahead, so Brian Cody will be delighted with that. Wexford could do a little more before the break. Great take from McDonald, and he may well just force one more score. And we could have the bare minimum between them, heading back into those changing rooms. It's great to see, isn't it? The feeling, it's been unbelievable. It's been a major feature of the first half here, and it's great to see that fellas are willing to put up their hand in and grab that ball as well, like, you know, because it's something, as I said earlier, like, teams are starting to knock the ball down and break, but when you have the lads, like, that are open the field today, like, to see it is, is just, it's, it's a beautiful sight. Well, there you are. Eleven balls contested in the air, cleanly won seven times by Wexford. There's Lee Chin looking for his sixth. Bent in off the left side, over it goes, and that score has left this game on a knife edge at halftime. A really good first half. They've gone score for score. 35 minutes in here at Croke Park, everything to play for with a place in the Leinster final at stake. It is Kilkenny leading Wexford by 15 points to 14. We'll have analysis next. Let's head back then to Dave McIntyre and Anthony Nash. Yes, thank you, Gronje. So away we go again. Really good first half, high on quality. And after such a high-scoring league campaign, Anthony, in which there was a lot of hand-wringing about where Hurling was going, every score today has been so hard to come by. And that is just tailed to the right and wide off Rory O'Connor, who couldn't miss in the first half. Yeah, that's all since we did the trend. The league will do one thing, and next thing all of a sudden, come championship, referees will kind of like ease off at the whistle as well, and it turns it into obviously a far better um, spectacle. And that's what has happened today. Double change for Kilkenny at the break. James Mark and Connor Fogarty. Fogarty's so experienced coming in. Tom Cody clearly feeling his side need a lift. The beginning of the second half, here's Dermot O'Keefe. That is well short into the hands of Owen Murphy. Playing in the championship for the 40th time today, the kill Kenny number one. It fell neatly into the arms of Mossy Keown, targeting TJ Reid, who has Matty O'Hanlon all over his back. Reid looking for some support, and he gets it from Owen Cody, who had three excellent scores in that first half. Here is Reid. 13 years a senior, two men from Ballyhill. Reed from play hasn't quite been on it as yet, but it only takes a moment for him to break a game wide open. It's the third wide of the game for Kilkenny, who've been pretty economical with the chances they've taken. It's gathered by Rory O'Connor, just about keeps the ball in the field. Was beyond the hurley of Conor McDonald and picked up by Tommy Walsh. Murphy, a lot of time to study his options, decides to go after Reid again. And it was a good call as well as Reid turns and spins. And the delay eventually sees the white flag being raised. Can you need him? He's after a good start now to the second half there, and in fairness to Matthew Hand and had a decent first half. But that's what exactly what TJ can do. Like you said, he just takes him one split second and there's a goal in the back of the net and Kilkenny will be piling on. So they're just looking for a bit more in the second half, and his aerial threat is obviously massive. Double that half-time lead. Pocket spilled by Gavin Bailey. Here come Kilkenny again. Paddy Deegan, a rare foray forward for him from cornerback. Puffed up possession. Looking to win it back was Richie Reid, and it's fallen to TJ Reid. And a space out wide for Conor Fogarty, his first touch since coming in, and it's a pretty good first touch as well. TJ's really getting into it now. That was a great hand pass and layoff, and he attracts so many people to him that the other players do get loose like Conor Fogarty here, and it's a great score. Another member of this, Kenny Tanner, with a score all Ireland medals, Conor Fogarty. 
been left out of the starting 15. But he's got this full second half to impose himself. And worrying for Wexford, they trail by three, having led by three at one stage in the first half. Here is Chin. Looking to lead them back towards parity. He may do it in one fell swoop, Lee Chin. Oh, Morris looking to gather it now. But he was closed down really well by the Kilkenny defence, Lee Chin. Goal chance snuffed out. Here it's a crucial period of the game. Kilkenny are on top. I should have to try and hold on to their coattails. Rory O'Connor flicked away from him and it'll be a line ball for Wexford. If I was a Kilkenny person, I'd be unhappy over in the corner that Hugh Lawler didn't get a free. But he got fouled and his foot in the ground and he was the guy that makes the last this tackle here. If you watch this, what a great hook. Like that just showed unbelievable determination to get back in he was the one that was potentially fouled out and came all the way back in and stopped a certain goal again it's considered going short through Conor McDonald but it's a pretty nice strike off the side sideline cut and there wasn't a teammate in the vicinity of it around was Richie Reid and he did well to find Alan Murphy that would be a Wexford ball Kenny that sent it back in. Good work again from Alan Murphy. Well taken by Paddy Deegan. <laughs> Murphy offering himself for the short ball. Deegan goes long. Swiped off the ground. There's the sweeper in Foley. He's a little isolated, Foley. Dispossessed. And Reed, almost like he's hitting a free, strikes that one clean and through. And it's another one for him in this second half. And he's ninth in total. And the lead is now four. We spoke about him at half time that he wasn't in the game as much as he used to be. <laughs> Five minutes and he's absolutely stormed into the game again. And Brian Cole would be delighted to see him being so influential so far. Three from play, which is as many as any other player on the pitch at the moment. And Hamlin looking to feed one down towards Mikey Dwyer. Doing well to try and make this at least a scrap. The ball had gone beyond him. But he's lying on and around the ball. That will be thrown in by the referee. Already, Anthony, you feel Wexford need the next score here. Absolutely, especially when it's TJ Reid is doing all the damage for Kilkenny. Like he's not only when he gets a score, he helps his teammates and lifts his teammates as well. Wexford do need to settle down. One of their big three need to come back into it like they were in the first half. There's Morris back from Murphy. That ball well towards Conor McDonald. Well, he is one of those big three you mentioned, but he can't find the target. Seventh wide of the game for Wexford. Here's Adrian Mullen. Diagonal ball inside. Out front was Liam Ryan. He's on the ball now. He needs to play it here. He's taken it a long way, but he's lost it, and he's now out of position. Richard have won it straight back, and now a bit of space for Limo for Garber. Time to set his feet and strike, and over it goes, and Wexford needed that one, his second of the game. Kilkenny have upped intensity as well. All those Wexford chances barred out one have been from the wing and under pressure. Again, they're pushing outside. It's a great score, and I thought Alan Murphy was going to stop his third point of the game, but uh, just snuck over. Two in that Munster final a couple of years ago, Lee Morgan McGovern. A couple against Leash last weekend as well. Brilliant take from Sean Murphy. Trying to get away from Billy Ryan. And Murphy was playing advantage. He'll come back for the previous foul on Murphy as he was trying to drive into the space. Great to see another take again in the air. the foul and the result of that will be an opportunity for Mark Fanning his penalty against Kilkenny the decisive moment of that provincial final a couple of years ago he's worked it short this time charge into the tackle was Kevin Foley it was a bit of a misjudgment from him Massey Keown 
He was trying to flick it to his left where Billy Ryan was, but unfortunately for him, Dermot O'Keefe was also there. That's it off the ground. And the other side really treating the ball like it should be treated at the moment, giving it away frequently. Chin sees some space ahead of Mikey Dwyer. And Dwyer chose to go directly into the contact, and he may well regret that decision now. The referee really allowing this game flow. Bailey, he's fouled. And Maxwell had a chance to trim another point off the arrears. They can have really upped their intensity so far in the second half, and not only have they upped the intensity, they seem to be pushing more up on the, um, on the Wexford uh, defenders, so they're putting under pressure from, from an earlier stage, while in the first half they were going to come to the 45 and deliver it in. So it's an interesting um, start to the second half. They seem to have gotten a foothold in the game, and Wexford do need this one to set them down again. And that's a booking for Tommy Wall, so two of that Kilkenny full back line now on a yellow. Danny Deegan the other. Kilkenny backs are well used to being on yellow cars, JJ will tell you that. There's no fear of them. But the physicality in the tackle again there that went through, I think it was actually Hugh Lawler again that came out, came out to stop the goal there from um, Mike Dwyer. It was a great tackle again. It's a sign of the game, a show of the part of the game that Kilkenny very good at. So seventh for Lee Chin. Another change being made by Brian Cody. John Donnelly comes in. Billy Ryan being withdrawn. Fifth season on the panel, John Donnelly. He was nominated for an All-Star last year, a really good championship. Fired out by Murphy. So I managed in the air very well by Adrian Mullen. He took the shot on himself, but never really looked set for it. Fourth kill Kenny White. Brian Cody immediately on his case. The scores haven't been coming quite as frequently as they did in the first half, but you can't take your eye off it. Connor Brown. Again, Reed, always the target. Quickly onto it is Shane Rick. Back for Fanning. down towards Nemo McGovern. And it was good work from Paddy Deegan under that ball, just broke it. And he's on the ball again here. Knew he had Richie Reid for company outside him. In towards Owen Cody. And he's dragged Liam Ryan out the field with him. Cody drilled that ball inside to Mossy Kiel. But there were two men on him, including Lee Chin. And here come Wexford and Liam McGovern. Chin now. Towards Paul Morris. And Wexford can ill afford. Got lack of precision from those shooting opportunities. The game might be, seem like it's gone a bit scrappy, but the physicality is, is unbelievable. It's easier to watch it from up here. And turn over here again for Wexford. Paul Morris just saw Dean O'Keefe press straight into the oncoming challenge. And it may well be another booking. And it's Paddy Deegan that was the scene. Hugh Lawler was the man with the second challenge. He isn't now going to be booked, so he's managed to avoid blotting his copybook for now. Jack O'Connor is going to be coming in. Going to be in for Wexford shortly. We'll be hoping that when he does come in, it'll be a one point game. <laughs> and the lead was out at four, but they've just kept chipping away at it. Right down to the bare minimum. Well, that wide ball from Paul Morris, his last contribution to the game. Jack O'Connor comes in, another very experienced operator, his 23rd championship appearance. The brother of Rory, his cousin Joe on the bench, and of course, what a hurling family it is. George and John from that great side from 96. Finally trying to break his way out from that Kilkenny press, and he's done so, and now there's a bit of space for Gavin Bailey. 
finds Mikey Dwyer, who wants to run at this Kilkenny defence, who are a little outnumbered at the moment. Immediately into the game is Jack O'Connor. Looking to flick the ball over his shoulder, but the pressure told in the end. Well, that was a real chance, Anthony. They butchered it. Yeah, Jack O'Connor is a massive player for, for Wexford, and just to see the overlap and opportunity there again, um, it's, it, it probably should have been a score, really, to be honest. And Murphy clocked down. And Shane Reck is having a big second half. Just a pull on his shoulder, and there goes the whistle. I was unfortunately here in 96. My two uncles were playing for Limerick that day, so um, I don't really appreciate you bringing up that memory. <laughs> Anytime Wexford are going well in Croke Park, it tends to be mentioned. They haven't reached an All Ireland final since. Came so close a couple of years ago when they really ran Tipperary in the last four. Tip went on to win the All Ireland. Here is Mark Fanny. He's decided he's going to go for this one. And he certainly caught all of it, but just lacked in the direction and they are now into double figures on the wides count Wexford he's on Murphy he's scored 10 championship points himself in his time and breaking off Liam Old McGovern Many years as he spent on this sideline, the hunger is never dimmed and it doesn't look like it will anytime soon. 11 All Ireland wins in his time. Kenny, six years without bringing Liam McCarthy back to the county now. The longest wait without the All Ireland since they went from 93 to 2000. Foley down. And he switched to red. As we enter the final 20 minutes of this Leinster semi final. And the best of line balls from Wexford. And his hands and knees scrambling for it was Gavin Bailey. He'll come out with it. And it is Wexford through Simon O'Donoghue. Sean Murphy looks at the posts. Besides, it's within his gambit, and it absolutely was, and we're level, level for the eighth time in this game. Yeah, I was saying during the week, I thought it'd be the tightest game of the weekend, and it looks like it's going to be that. That's why you think that Wexford have such high um, wide counts during games. I wouldn't know their stats no too well, but they do take the shots when it's on, and a great score there again from Murphy. Can you look to retake the lead here? All in the hand of Mossy Kill. Mar with his first touch, I think, since coming in. And he fires one over the bar. Seventh different score for Kilkenny today. Kilkenny targeting Jack O'Connor. His feet to it in the air. Great piece of defensive play from Porig Walsh, but the ball inside is picked up by Liam Ryan and back from where it began with Mark Fanning. Sees the run out wide from O'Connor, and that's where he's gone with it. It's inch perfect. O'Connor off his left side. He's caught that one brilliantly and over it goes. That's a great score. He was he was the guy that was actually beaten by Porig Walsh under the puck out on this wing. And <laughs> about 10 seconds later, he's over on the other wing. And just, again, like all the other Wexford forwards, they must practice from the sideline lock as straight over the bar. There was a mascot, Will, and Wexford beat Kilkenny at the Leinster final of 1997. This game is bubbling over nicely as we enter the second water break. Nothing between them. Let's get the thoughts of our studio panel down in Thurles. In the three points from, from play as well at the start, TJ had a massive influence as well. But Wexford responded absolutely brilliant as well. They got four points from, from, from um, for the next 10 minutes. Kilkenny's after going probably 10 minutes without scoring as well. Important score from James Maher. So, look, it, it's, it's all tied up for a brilliant finish there again. 
Yeah, it's, it's turned out to be a good game. We probably haven't seen the intensity that we saw maybe in the first half uh, during that quarter, but it's very, very tight, and, and Jack O'Connor is after coming on there getting a good score for Wexford. So again, the substitutions that happen now maybe in the last quarter, they will have to make an impact if, they, if they're brought off the bench, but uh, all to play for very tight as, as, we, as we suspect it. Wexford really have come roaring back into the second half. They got five of the last six scores. And those who've been lucky enough to get their hands on a ticket have really been treated to entertainment in this double header. And in the midst of that Wexford group, Davy Fitzgerald trying to do whatever he can to inspire them in this final quarter. Leinster final meeting with Dublin, the prize. A guaranteed All Ireland quarter final place would be the minimum for the winners. Brian Cody has been around the block often enough to know that these players have it within them to get this job done over the next 18 minutes or so. They regained the Leinster title last year. Well, do you want to call it from here, Anthony? No, <laughs> I think the guy coming on here that will have a big influence, I think Walter Walsh is, um, I was surprised he wasn't starting, I know he did an injury in the nose against clearing the league, but for Kilkenny people, it would be great to see him come on, he's such a huge man and uh, has a great effect in the game and is calling for the first pocket already. Former All-Star, former man of the match in an All-Ireland final, great man to have in reserve, Walter Walsh, it's another trump card played by Brian Cody, here is Foley, Liam McGovern now. Sean Murphy, he's only struck one over the bar a couple of minutes ago. Oh, that's brilliant. That's inspirational stuff from the wing back. Two massive scores. Team lifting scores, to be honest. I know they've pushed back into the lead. It's just <laughs> nip and tuck the whole time. And I said, it just seems like a few minutes ago that Wexford needed the next score. Well, they've got six of the last seven, and they've got their noses back in front. And more of the breaking balls are now going their way. Here's Limo McGovern. Referee spotted that chop down on him as he broke the tackles. And Wexford will have a chance to go two in front. Such a strange game, like it's just every time you look at the scoreboard, <laughs> you know, one team are just ahead of the other. Um, and like you mentioned there, we were like you were almost every, every, like you know asking Wexford to, to get back into the game as T.J. Reid started the second half like he did, and now Kilkenny are hoping T.J. Reid fires back into the game like he did to start the second half again. So it's going to be a very interesting last quarter. It certainly is. McGovern who made his debut in the qualifiers against Carlo nine years ago. As we said at the outset, 13 of the 15 the start of this game started that Leinster final two years ago. David Fitzgerald operates off a pretty small pool of players who he trusts immensely, including this man, one of his joint captains, Lee Chin, already with eight scores today. Right down the middle. The lead is two. Murphy looking for John Donnelly. Collected by Donahue. Actually just seem to have more energy at the moment. And the breaking ball's going their way. And this one is sticking as well. Rory O'Connor, he has Dwyer inside him. And he just went down as he prepared to make his ultimate decision. Those sorts of chances really are those that would see Wexford over the line. David Fitzgerald beneath us with his head in his hands. Well, I can't blame him. He's so unlucky. It was great play there. Great move again from Rory O'Connor. I was actually going to mention when you were talking about the small pool of players, it's the impact from the bench now. And can Wexford keep this intensity up with that small pool of players they have? On top of TJ Reid, and it squirts all the way through to Fanning. Sees Nemo McGovern in a little bit of space. Brilliantly controlled. His opposite number is Fogarty, lost the hurley. Now Matthew O'Hanlon. Only look behind him. Thought he spotted a man in purple and gold. And it was black and amber instead, and that free is crucial. And a chance for Kilkenny to get back to it in one. Yeah, Kilkenny needed, 
need to settle back down now again and get back into their, their rhythm. The one thing that Walter Walsh coming on does is it actually allows TJ Reid to kind of move more closer to goal as soon as he came in into full forward. So it'll be interesting to see will he stay inside or he normally roams around with Matthew Hanlon after getting back on top of him again. So I see you no know, can you need him back in as quick as they can. TJ Reid has won this competition nine times. As well as all Ireland, he's racked up at all levels with Kilkenny. He's into double figures for the day. Not quite the 118 he plundered against Wexford in the league, but it's kept his side ticking along nicely. And broken down by James Mark. A foul by Lee Chip. And since it's just another mini shift in the momentum in this game. It's ebbed and flowed really throughout outside have enjoyed several purple patches so the free call by Erdo Hora and it's going to give Owen Murphy the opportunity to go for goal from outside his own 45 meter line that got the legs to make it. This would be the equalising score. Well, they are being reined in from way out the field from both sides. Owen Murphy with his 11th championship points and will level again. That's a great score. Like, I know people give out about the weight of the slitter and, you know, how it's affecting the game and stuff, but that's a skill. Like, he's on his own 45, has to drive it straight and through and has done so, and it's a massive score, and that'll give Kilkenny another little lift. 12 minutes remaining, nothing between them. Here is McDonald. Starred under 21 level for Wexford and now uh, very much so with the seniors as well. Couldn't find a team out there until Kenny have broken one tackle and suddenly this space has opened up for James Mark. Looking for his second since coming in. Well, they were two down and almost in the blink of an eye, they're back in the lead. Quick puck out from Fanning. They've worked it into O'Connor, Jack O'Connor that is. This time, Kilkenny now are starting to get on top in those challenges and those breaking balls. Lee Chin, he's turning in a phone box in that congested area. This is Tommy Walsh. There's Adrian Mullen for company. Walsh decides he can go himself. And over it goes from Tommy Walsh, the 23-year-old from Tullerone. That's just his second ever championship point, and Kilkenny lead by two again. I don't think he's going to get a better one. <laughs> that was off the hurley on the run under pressure, just over the bar, and a more important one as well. It's like every five minutes this game is changing. It's like Wexford take over Kilkenny, but for me, it's when Kilkenny get the bodies to the break, they're getting way more possession, and they're after taking a little hold in the game. Then again, so no, it's, it's no Wexford's chance or you know opportunity to come back into it. And it's not the Cats that have got five of the last six points in the second half. They are absolutely on top when they were struggling no more than three or four minutes ago. Brilliant piece of scavengery there from John Donnelly. He's had a real impact since coming in. Forig Walsh now. His cousin has just fired one over from range. Walsh can't repeat the feat. Just a fifth wide for Kilkenny. Fanning goes long this time. They really mix it up, oh it's broken into the space, a chance for David Dunn, he's just in the field, Dunn for Wexford, gets the goal, that puts his side back in front, what a first touch for the man, introduced by Davy Fitzgerald just moments ago. Podrick Walsh was gone from the middle, he was just had to put in the ball wide in the wing, and next to a quicker puck out down the middle again, ball was wide as I said earlier, logo faster, straight through the middle, no one at home, and a great goal for Wexford. Third championship goal for David Dunn. He took it well, sent Murphy the wrong way. And the momentum has shifted yet again. Leach in. 67 metres out from goal. Leach in with his 10th score of the afternoon. Well, this is breathless stuff at Croke Park. It's one of the most extraordinary games I've ever witnessed. Like, you asked me 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, to call it. I still can't call it. 
It's incredible. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't put a pass kick in to come and get the next three or four scores. It's a great spectacle, and, and it's great to have people inside here. The atmosphere, even though there is only something like 8,000, the noise is brilliant. Thankfully, we have nine minutes plus injury time remaining. We're not done yet. And Extra I time. I believe, perhaps, yeah, there will need to be a winner today, regardless of how we come across that victor. All we know at the moment is that Dublin await the winners in two weeks' time. Murphy in over the head of TJ Ray. Oh, it's a big hit to Nemo McGovern. And he bounced straight back to his feet. Referee has blown the whistle for the foul. McGovern has decided he just needs to take a breath or two because that was a crunching collision. And it's a yellow card for John Donnelly. That was some hit. I know it was illegal, but Jesus, you felt it up here. Again, I repeat myself from earlier, that's why he stood inside the small square. Didn't get too many of them, thank God. There it is again. And he did, in fairness, try and line him up with the shoulder, but he was ducking into the challenge. Limo McGovern back to his feet. Mark Fanning. He's considering his options, I think he's going for this. He won't lack in distance, and he hasn't lacked in accuracy either, Mark Fanning. Two great scores from the goalkeepers, love to see it. Right out of the Anthony Nash playbook. Minor right. <laughs> Suddenly, Kilkenny are back down, staring at a three-point deficit. It's a foul from the onrushing Liam Ryan who popped up possession. TJ Reid, all of his experience, he looked just to settle those around him. And Foster's run over the bar. James Bergen has come in for Alan Murphy. Bergen from the Conaghy Shamrocks Club. He captained them to the All Ireland Junior title last year at the age of just 20 years old. And he's come in for his championship debut with this game on a knife edge. Could he be the hero for Kilkenny in the coming minutes? Over it goes from TJ Reid, his 11th. Fanning taking his time. Nobody wants to be the man who makes the mistake that could cost their side a place in the Leinster final. Looks towards Lee Chin. Here is Conor McDonald off his left side, and McDonald has put that to the left and wide. Well, that could be a crucial score, a crucial miss is what it was in the end. The ball over the head of Lee Chin, he goes back for more, and he just shunts John Donnelly out of the way and squeezes the ball. Almost through the eye of the needle towards Dermot O'Keefe. Well, charging through the tackle illegally, so was Jack O'Connor in the eyes of the referee. TJ Reid has ordered those around him to keep their heads. He's made his way out the field to take this free in. Davy Fitz is nearly inside by the referee with that. He wasn't happy at all. Like, can he need this now though? And he's still only going to bring it back to one point game. Like that's the thing, it's so close. Such a great finish, but some great work right there from uh, from Lee Chin coming back and just Jack Connor was unlucky, not to be fair, I thought. He still holds every ball. His time at Wexford has meant so much to him. He's watching TJ Reid lift and strike this effort from way out the field. Reid sends it goalwards, sends it over the bar. And Kilkenny yet again have clawed the way back to it in one. His 12th of the day. That's a great score. I know it's a free, like, and people give out about the freeze during the league and stuff like that, but that's massive. Like, that's a great, that's a massive strike again from TJ Reid. So accurate as well. I know the pressure that's on him with this game, at the stage it is at the moment. Here is Lee Chin. It broke into space for him. Oh, and it's off the upright. He never caught it cleanly, Lee Chin. It's a couple of chances now Wexford have given away. I really could have put them in a commanding position into this final five minutes. Helped on by Walter Welch. 
and he might get it again. O'Hanlon watching him. Walter Welch pulls the trigger and puts it over the bar. It was Joe Canning territory over there on that far side. And we're level for the tenth time. Now, this is incredible. Like, it, it's, it's just all the way up the field. He got that off one Murphy all the way back in his own 45. Brought it, they worked it up and all the way over to the bar. It's a great, what a great game of hurling. And now with 44 championship appearances under his belt. Now that's the sort of ammunition Brian Cody has on his, on his bench. is calling for this ball. Chance for everyone to go draw breath here. And can he do come away with it eventually? And TJ Reid, who looked like he was being fouled, he's helped it on to John Donnelly. The man from Thomastown, Donnelly with another score for Kilkenny. And they've turned it around yet again. It almost has Cody dancing on the sideline. Three minutes remaining. What a puck out from Fanning. Right at top of McDonald, he's dropped it again. Looking to make space for the shot. Out towards Limo McGovern. And Liam Old McGovern has a go, and he finds his mark as well. He is second of the game. It is like two heavyweight boxers slugging it out in the final round of a championship bout. And both teams very much still standing. That's broken through for Kilkenny and Owen Cody. Cody for goal! Owen Cody with potentially the knockout blow. What a huge, huge moment for the young man. His first ever championship goal. Great composure on the finish there. Hurley's flying all over him. What a great finish in 68 minutes. Here's Lee Chin at the other end of the field, being fouled by Porig Walsh. And a yellow card for the Kilkenny centre half back. But it's one he'll take at this stage, Anthony. Kilkenny now need to ensure they don't concede a goal. This is one of the most exciting games of hurling that I've ever witnessed. It's just ebbed and flowed. No team have grabbed the whole of it for more than five to ten minutes. The other team to get up again. And like you described, it is like a heavyweight punch. Both in the 12th round to swing and like and hopefully connect. And Lee Chin moves to 11. Or will it be enough? I wonder how much injury time there'll be. We could do a 10 or 15 minutes of it, the entertainment value has been that good. Here is Tommy Walsh. Sent long by Walsh down on top of TJ Reid again. And eventually coming out with it is Mossy Kill. Behind him calling for it was Bergen who's blocked away. Down over towards Adrian Mullen and out it goes. And some attention needed for Sean Murphy. Well, it's been so many players, Anthony, that have repressed us today, and it's very difficult to pick the man of the match, but who have you gone with in the end? Like we spoke at the start of the game with the big three and the big players in each team. Um, Rory O'Connor had a great start. Connor McDonald kind of died out leeching continuously, but I thought for every part of the game that Kilkenny were in, and especially when it was needed to start the second half, TJ Reid, he's been involved in all the good play for Kilkenny. He's freeze again, and I know from open play people might have said he had the game, but there were some massive scores from freeze, and he, he even his hand pass and work right there for a Walter Walsh to score. So for me, TJ Reid. No points from play as well for TJ Reid, the centre man of the match. Win. Will that man of the match emerge on the victorious side? It looks that way at the moment, but you'd be rather foolish to predict it, even at this late stage. Anything can still happen here. And there he is, Reid again. Looking down from the air, five additional minutes. Here is Shane Reck now. 
Pickford felt he was being fouled. Certainly Davy did on the sideline. Ball over the head of Simon Donahue. Looking to beat Bergen to it. And he's won the free out. There's plenty of time for Wexford to save themselves here. They drew a couple of years ago on the round robin stage of the Leinster Championship. Wexford would certainly take a draw now, you feel, and take their chances in extra time. We've seen Dublin come up with a huge performance to beat Galway. Wexford at times in this second half looked like they joined them in that final. And Wexford now looking to bring Connor Furman in. Well, Mark Fanning is standing over this free. And the pressure could not be greater. If he goes for goal, he simply has to make it. Give his side a real fighting chance as he pulled it. It's going to drop short, and Owen Murphy never took his eye off it. Targeting Donnelly with his ball out the field. Liam McGovern still fun of running. The fitness and athleticism from these players, who must be tiring by now, in towards Lee Chin. Couldn't gather it. Possession absolutely vital here. And that's a push in the back from on Connor McDonald. It'll be an easy chance for Wexford to go do it in one. Yeah, this game is far from over. The next puck is going to be very interesting as well. Furman has come in as Lee Chin tops this one over the bar. Chin with his 11th, 26th point of the day for Wexford. And they would have been rocked by that own Cody goal, but they've found the result, the wherewithal to come back into it. Maybe one more Kilkenny score might be enough. Will this be it? No. Short into the hands of Fanning. Wexford will have a chance here. Two minutes remaining. That's an awful ball from the goalkeeper, and Liam Ryan kept his composure. Leaves Reed in his wake. Ryan looking for the equaliser. Batted away by Murphy. And it's flicked to the net. That's an incredible goal. Connor McDonald. Well, the referee's going in for a look at it. The green flag was raised. Well, late, late drama here. Connor McDonald was under that ball that was juggled under his bar by Owen Murphy. The umpire seems to have given the point to say Owen Murphy's hurley was diagonally behind the crossbar, and that's what the discussion's going to be about here. Owen Murphy's hoping to God he didn't save a point this time. Well, we're going to Hawkeye, essentially to decide whether or not Wexford have won this game. As we enter the final minute of injury time, it's either a goal that is Wexford two up, or a point that will drive us towards extra time. What more is this game going to give us? This is absolutely incredible. Was this ball over the bar from Liam Ryan, the Wexford fullback? He'll be desperately hoping it wasn't, of course. Well, it is going to be a point. The goal won't stand for Conor McDonald. And it is 30 points apiece. 127 with 30 seconds remaining. And still time, Anthony, for a potential winner. Does Hawkeye judge whether it's over or just in between? I'd love to know that. We're after taking away from an incredible score from Lee Ryan. Like, what a great score. Well, very rarely as a player in Pro Park wished he hadn't scored. Perhaps never. Here come Wexford and Lee Moog McGovern. Oh, the drama. It's quite incredible. Sent long by Paddy Deegan. We're into a sixth additional minute here at Pro Park. Oh, Hanlon goes down beneath the tackle. Fanning will come out to hit it. Well, Anthony, even in these sorts of positions, he's midway between the 21 and the, his own 45. Has he got it in his range? I don't think he does. He's leaving it to Kevin Foley, who will drive up long, and they'll take their chances from there. They're going to work a chart. He's looking to work a chart. I think it was actually Tom Mark Fanning he was looking at, but in fairness, Uncle, he's after pushing up on it there. Now Mark Fanning's coming out to take it. Well, there are 8,000 at Crow Park today. It feels like there's an awful lot more than that. 
but every single one of them, no matter what their county background, will be on the edge of their seat here. Mark Fanning looking to send Wexford to the Leinster final. Otherwise, we're likely looking at extra time. Here it comes from the Wexford goalkeeper. It's tailing away to the left. Brilliant take from Paddy Deegan. And the referee has blown the whistle full time. What an extraordinary second half, in particular, last 10 minutes we've had here. But in the end, Anthony, they can't be separated. Both teams deserve well, another, another crack off it. Like, there was no winner out there today. Like, even go back to the match, it was so difficult to pick them because everybody had fits and spurts and played well. And both teams deserve another crack at this, and it's brilliant for us. I'm delighted, and I'm sure all the spectators here are as well and not home. Well, there's the full-time score. Incredible rating, really. 127 apiece, both sides led by three points at various stages in the last ten minutes alone. It looked like Conor MacDonald had won the game for Wexford with that flick to the net. But Owen Murphy will be thankful, Anthony, he failed to keep that ball on the field of play. I, I, like again, I've never seen that before, um, especially with Hawkeye since has come into the game, like the weather to judge whether it's gone over the bar or not. It'd be interesting to find out if that is the case, it obviously is, if they're going to it. But like he saved two in the first half as well, and you know, when he was going up for it, it was it was uh, it was. Um, okay, it was we're going to expect to there, Anthony. Plenty more to come from Anthony Nash. We've extra time incoming. Let's go back to the guys in studio. That's the man at the centre of it. Tony Buckley just wants to get out there and hurl and see if he can get his county into another Lancer decider. They've decided that they have everything sorted. And away we go. 127 apiece. Both sides have had the upper hand multiple times over the course of the game. And towards Nemo McGovern, it's gathered by Deegan. It's a dangerous ball across the field from Deegan straight to the Wexford co-captain. It's popped into the path of Connell Flood, who rounds the goalkeeper. And Owen Murphy could be in a lot of trouble here. The referee has decided a goal-scoring opportunity was denied. Murphy will be shown a yellow card, and a penalty has been given. Just seconds into the first period of extra time, and Owen Murphy will have to leave the field. This could be absolutely massive, so I'm assuming Kilkenny have to take off an outfielder and put a goal in, is it? This, is, this game just doesn't stop giving. Um, you know, in fairness to him, look, if it was the old days, he would have absolutely nailed him down. Um, he's the right decision, I suppose, but don't he know he's gone for 10 minutes and potentially is it a penalty? He's after giving her a free penalty. Mark Fan is going to have to take it. So it could be a goal for Wexford and Kilkenny with 10 or 14 men for 10 minutes. So in comes Darren Brennan, who hasn't played in the championship since 2019 when he faced Galway. It's his fourth appearance in senior championship hurling. The 24-year-old from St. Lockton's facing Mark Fanning for Wexford, and he can't keep it out. It's squeezed over the line. The man who got the penalty in the Leinster final two years ago has got another today, and Darren Brennan was a whisker away from keeping it out. Oh, it was a great effort by Darren Brennan, in fairness, and that is just heartbreak to see it crawl over the line. Well struck from Mark Fanning, but oh, in fairness to Darren, it was a great effort and very unlucky. The third championship goal for Mark Fanning. Wexford lead by three, and Kilkenny have won a free almost immediately, and TJ Reid will add to his tally, move it to 13, and the gap will be down to two. Well, immediately after the resumption, we've had another injection of drama and intrigue into this Leinster semi-final. That's incredible. Interesting, no, what will Wexford do? They normally have one sweeper, obviously, no, they've got the extra man, so what are they going to do with Foley? Will they push him up and create someone else or keep him? But it's a team you don't want to give an extra man to as Wexford because they're so good with the ball. Well, that's exactly what has happened. Foley has immediately gone out in and around midfield. So the message was very quick in getting on there. Matthew O'Hanlon has now gone back in to play the sweeper role in around his full back line. And that's a foul, a chop down by Hugh Lawler. And a free in for Wexford, he'll have a chance to go back three in front. This new rule has the potential to actually finish off a game. It's correct, I understand what they're trying to do, stop the goal-scoring opportunities from being halted illegally. But now you've ten minutes here, and especially in extra time when you've only got to 20 minutes. Wexford could pull away here quite handily. 
was the psychological blow as, as well, go, knowing you're down to 14, that your goalkeeper, who's one of the best in the business, has been forced to leave the field. So Lee Chin, who already has 12 to his name. see that one again Darren Brennan with a puck out down that Cusick stand side won't be long and needing the floodlights on here at Croke Park as the sun has long since dipped in behind the clouds here is John Donnelly Donnelly down on top of Mark Fanning and it's been flicked over the bar that's a really good finish in the end from Cody as it came in from Donnelly that's 1-4 for the reigning young hurler of the year what a day he's had it was great skill there he's very unlucky not to get a goal and actually started to cramp up a little bit which just shows the intensity he's gone into the 70 minutes here in Ottawa was very unlucky well, we could see it in that penalty immediately after the restart Kilkenny have responded exactly as you would expect them to as they have done all day there's Lee Moog McGovern with no hurry but he had the hand pass available to him over the stick work finds Gavin Bailey going to get away from Deegan and he's drawn the foul Matty O'Hanlon after getting it from his wing back and the foul's just been committed pretty freely by Paddy Deegan who's already on a yellow card he can ill afford to get down to 13 the next man down with cramp is Kevin Foley he's struggling just beneath our commentary position here in behind Lee Chin three extra players have gone down with cramp there a second ago and it just shows an even on Cody inside as well like this is the first championship match at like real pace now, like you know, so these these um these players are gonna start feeling it now in the extra time. Richard missed his last. And he's found his form pretty quickly. This is 13. So the lead is two again. Just under five minutes remaining in this first period of extra time. Andrew Wells beat to it, goes all the way back to Ryan. And his equalising point sent us into extra time. Here is Conor MacDonald. Look the challenge is coming in, it just pulled out of the strike. That was a clever piece of play. Remo McGovern drops it, the mistakes will happen a bit more frequently as tired bodies lead to tired minds and the free one by Walter Walsh. In fairness to Lee Moore, McGovern, of all the players in the country, he covers some ground for Wexford. And he was actually one of the guys down cramping there, so it just looks a little tired and interesting to see will Davy kind of start ringing in a few changes to keep the energy up. Dylan O'Keefe has been prepared for a return to the play. And it is Lee Moog McGovern who's coming off. Here is TJ Reid. Himself and Lee Chin with 13 points apiece. So Reid looking to his way in front in that little contest a long way from goal though must be 69 70 meters well if the posts were a meter apart he would have bisected them anyway that's his 14th score 11 of which have come from place bolts lead down to one again fanning goes short towards liam ryan O'Hanlon. There was a runner outside him in Foley, who hasn't been that far forward at any stage in the game. Walter Walsh is now really having an impact in the game, won it back for Kilkenny. Lovely ball from Reid into Cody, who just left it behind him. Just peels back into the space from where he came to make the opportunity a bit easier. Over it goes, 1-5 from a young man who's fast becoming one of Kilkenny's most lethal forwards, level yet again for the 14th time. It might be course for bringing up rugby here, but in sin bin terms, Kilkenny have done very well to keep the score and now they're back level again. A great ball in there from TJ Reid, very intelligent to put it outside of him. And uh, Owen Cody used his body to shepherd it in a great score. And as I said, like Kilkenny have been down to 14 men now for eight minutes and back level, great performance so far. Four of the last five scores since Owen Murphy was binned. 
That ball flicked in by Killian Buckley, but he didn't put enough on it to find TJ Reid. Oh, he's made life very awkward for his man. And Wexford will breathe a sigh of relief. Foley. So let's set one tackle and find Simon Donoghue. Bounces off Paddy Deegan. Here is Chin. Making a real effort to get to him was Killian Buckley. Chin knew he had time and space around him. But he's put that to the left and wide. Wexford's 12th in comparison to just five for Kilkenny. Yeah, he took a heavy hit there from Killian Buckley. But in fairness, Kilkenny, like, don't afford him in, but they're still getting the bodies to the contact. Yeah, in fairness, it's a fantastic performance. Like, in, at this stage of the game, they're out on their feet. There's players cramped being getting hurt all over the field. And Kilkenny are still putting in a great shift with 14 men. You'd expect nothing else from Brian Cody's team, I suppose. They surrendered big leads to Dublin and Waterford in last year's championship. Beat, beat Dublin in the proper against Waterford. They were four points up at one stage today, but Wexford can say the same. And either side really got out of sight. Paddy Deegan, thankfully for Kilkenny, is fit and able to continue. Brandon's book out. Five. Good evening and welcome to Semple Stadium. It is Cork against Chin. Lim. Foley. Don't want really to give the ball away here. Foley again. A bit more direct down towards Rory O'Connor, who was quiet in the second half. Gathers out of the second time of asking. And he was being pulled back as he drove inside. A Wexford will have a chance to go back in front as we head towards half time and extra time. Freeze aren't a killer, I suppose, for, for Kilkenny at this stage, because it does take time to take the free, and it eats into one Murphy's time off the field. So I know they won't like to give up the score, but there's another 30 seconds gone off the clock. Get him back Nicky in, get English, back to 15, one, two, and they'll be delighted to be probably seven, a point eight, down at half-time after this. We'll have one additional minute. We're already halfway through that. One minute, please, one minute. So we each in. Has missed a couple from place balls and from play. Looking for his 14th and to join TJ Reid on that mark. And over it goes. And Kenny will emerge from the halftime break with their full quota of 15. And that may be the final passage of play involving Darren Brennan. There is the halftime whistle. There's just one point between them. What a game we are enjoying here. Half time and extra time. And still there's almost nothing to separate these two sides. It is Kilkenny 132, Wexford 228, the minimum between the sides. Let's go back to Thurles and get the thoughts of our studio panel. Noah Murphy is back on the field for Kilkenny. Wexford will shortly introduce Cahill Dunbar. I come on for the last 10 minutes or so of the 2019 Leinster final. He'll get a similar amount of game time here. Although, Anthony, we were just going through the numbers at halftime and extra time. There were five men on that Wexford bench that had yet to be introduced, and yet they were bringing the likes of Dermot O'Keefe in for a second time. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier that he seems to not, not trust those players, but just use the same group of players all the time, just in the system. But an interesting one there just for, before the halftime there. Lee Chin took a bit of a heavy knock from Killian Buckley and he was getting a lot of medical treatment at that half time and he's now gone in full forward on top of Hugh Lawler isolated one on one in the edge of the square there so it's either because of the injury or it's just a tactical move but it'll be interesting to see can he get enough ball inside there well this sideline cut to be taken by TJ Reid he's one of those players in the country that can stick it over the bar from there but that's not his best effort gathered by Shane Wreck who's another dame in his on the bench as well, but no sign of him coming in as yet. That's a really good piece of work from James Bergen, who chased down a lost cause. It's led to a shooting opportunity for Kilkenny, which they haven't taken. James alluded to there at half time, like their mistakes will creep in, like we have to give these players credit, no matter what happens in the last 10 minutes, the effort they've put in. So wides and mistakes will happen. Fanning goes long. On the top of a Wexford half forward line that has been now shorn of Lee Chin. He's in there on the edge of the square. And the latest pair to start suffering from cramp is Porrick Walsh, and he can barely walk at the moment. Kilkenny come away again, and they've won the free. 
Billy Ryan, who has himself been reintroduced, having been taken off earlier in the game. And this will be a drawn game yet again. Jordan Foley goes into the referee's notebook. And he's limping now. He's struggling to put one foot in front of the other himself. And he will be hoping that's not the case for this man. TJ Reid looking for his 15th score. This will be 133 in two appearances against Wexford alone this season. They're astonishing numbers. Level for the 15th time. And over 80 minutes in injury time has failed to separate these teams. And the spectre of penalties will shortly begin to loom large over this fixture. And that would be historic indeed. And that's a really good bit of work from Reid. Took the ball off Connor Furman, who's only been introduced by Wexford. Kilkenny looking to go in front. Well, that penalty conceded in the sin binning of Old Murphy seemed like a body blow at the time, but somehow they've turned it around. And James Bergen is the cat's ahead again. That's class from TJ Reid. He actually told Killian Buckley to go back and pick up his man so he could come up and get the tackling. But to get the tackling and have the intelligence for Ota Hurley to give the hand pass, just that's the kind of work he does that's unseen as well. To a first point in championship hurling for Bergen. Sean Murphy helps the ball inside as Shane Reck has suddenly joined the full forward line. And the key men of the Wexford attack, O'Connor, McDonald, Lee Chin, they've all gone quiet. Kilkenny are on top again here and have really been on top since that penalty. Ball sliced down the left hand side towards Bergen. Bergen off his right side. Fanning waits and watches. He can't prevent it going over. A two point lead with just over six minutes remaining and James Bergen has come to the party. That started with Hugh Lawler going over to get the ball and a great ball back to O'Murphy who struck an unbelievable pass up the wing but Lee Chin couldn't follow Hugh Lawler. He just doesn't seem to be moving as well as he normally does. And Bergen was winning a Leinster title with the Kilkenny under 20s when Wexford last won the senior championship. And here he is strutting his stuff for the seniors now. Six minutes left, Kilkenny lead by two. They were three down after that penalty concession. Back out it goes to Murphy, who hit two great scores in normal time. This could be a goal opportunity. What a save from Owen Murphy. Rory O'Connor was clean through. He certainly didn't drag the man down there. It was a brilliant piece of Kilkenny goalkeeping. What a save. Now John Donnelly. And another chance for Kilkenny and Billy Ryan to put them three in front. That's a four-point turnaround. It could easily have been a goal at the other end. Donnelly gets his second. One more is giving fist pumps there. Like that's that that's his score, and it's actually a four-point swing. That was the reactions. Look how close he was when he got that's an incredible reaction save. Worked it all the way up the field again and over the bar. It's a four-point swing for Kilkenny there. And Billy Ryan second. And it's just non-stop this game here is Liam Ryan the man who sent us to extra time and that's a tired effort from him from the middle of the field at 13th Wexford wide Kevin Fall is really struggling here now he's limping back in again and Lee Chin is going off is he yeah he wasn't moving since that Killian Buckley hit well they brought in Carl Dunbar who scored a point in off the bench against Leash It's the left leg of Lee Chin that's given him trouble. Certainly looks like Frank. What a take from Walter Walsh, towering above the Wexford defence. Walsh for Kilkenny! <laughs> Rifles home! And that may well be the Wexford spirit broken. Walter Walsh made that himself, caught it in the air, and put it beyond Mark Fanning. They now lead by six, which is as much as either side is led by at any stage of this game. JJ referred to him. I think he's been the game changer since he came on. Like his physicality alone, but that's such an intelligent finish. Like you've no Lee Chin gone off the field. Kevin Foley struggling with a, with an injury, and then that goal for Kilkenny looks like they're going to pull away. This could be a harrowing few minutes for Wexford. They've lost all their shape, so they have here's own Cody back out to TJ Reid. The points will do now. Incredible that they trail by three, Anthony, in extra time. It's a 10-point turnaround in extra time alone. 
Uh, look, you can never write off Kilkenny at any stage. Like, you still see Brian Cody out in the middle of the field roaring. They've just grabbed the game by the scruff of neck. Wexford seem to have tired a small bit, but it's just their game plan. It just takes so much energy. Well, they were millimetres away from winning the game. Hawkeye intervened with the last puck of the 70 minutes. And there's another man down with cramp in purple and gold. Have they any fight left in them? Kilkenny now look like a side full of energy, full of belief. They're on top in every facet of the game now. Walter Welch, he's just got the goal. That's going to drop short. Wexford are hurling with 14 at the moment. Can't quite see who it is getting the treatment. Ball is going to cross to Connell Flood. He should be one of the fresher players in this Wexford side, but not fresh enough to find the target. A 14th wide, and in comparison to the six that have been hit wide by Kilkenny, that's another strand to this game that Wexford will be ruining. To be fair to Wexford, they've put in an absolute fantastic shift, so there's no criticism, but they just seem to be tiring as well. But it seemed, I think it's actually Diablo O'Keefe that's underground when he was reintroduced, so he's no done cramping after being brought back in. Another ball in towards TJ Reid, 33 years of age, and he doesn't look like he is struggling physically at all. And that has just tailed away to the left and wide. Well, only a miracle will save Wexford now. In comes Connor Hearn for Wexford to make his championship debut. The Wexford club hurler of the year last year is his club side, Chamalier, has won the county title. Dermot O'Keefe withdrawn for the second time in this game, and I think Anthony Davy Fitzgerald knows that his side's race is run. They need to rouse themselves now for a run through the back door. Kilkenny's bench made the difference for me. Walter Walsh, James Bergen came in and got some great scores. Well, you've Killian Buckley, like that's a serious, um, serious bench to have to bring on, and they've made a big difference. John Donnelly as well with a score. Here's Paul Morris back on as well. Several Wexford players have been taken off and brought back in. It's a clever ball inside to Jack O'Connor, but he just lost control of it at the last second. Owen Murphy will win the free out for Kilkenny now. That's great goalkeeping. <laughs> I hope we get to see a replay of that there because Padraig Walsh carried the ball across the square and got, the, uh, got reflected here. You see how close again the ball was to Owen Murphy. He gets to control it. That's a great reaction and composure and took a heavy hit in from Foley. But um, great goalkeeping again. He wasn't too happy with Padraig. You can see him giving a bit of a shout. Kenny to reach yet another Leinster final under Brian Cody. They're really cruising there now. A game in which we actually have asked them pretty much every question they could have done. Mark Fanning will drop this in and around the house and hope for the best. Anywhere will do for Kilkenny at this stage. Just playing down the clock now. Killian Buckley sends it long. One additional minute at the end of extra time. At the end of one of the great. Kilkenny Wexford battles that we've seen in recent times. Wexford came so close to winning it. Might feel they should have won it. And in the end, it's going to be Kilkenny. And we're leading by seven. It's not the finish this game deserved. He had everything, you know. I see Kevin Foley there being helped up off his feet. Like, uh, you know, Davy Fitz, I'm sure, will come out in, in the after, after match um, interviews and say how proud he is of him. I hope everyone at home would be as well to see what we saw in person today. has been a phenomenal game. And as I said, just it's not the finish it deserved. But what a great, great game of hurling. And after a terrible 2020, Wexford will certainly be encouraged by the manner of the performance today. But they will be absolutely gutted with the results. And further damage being inflicted here, potentially. And over the bar it goes, fired home by Michael Carey, son of the great DJ Carey, who's come on to make his championship debut and score his first point in senior championship hurling. The referee's call for the ball. 
Kilkenny have won the most epic of battles by eight points at the end, but that final scoreline does not in any way tell the story of what has been an incredible couple of hours here at Croke Park. They qualify Kilkenny for a 20th Leinster final under the stewardship of Brian Cody. Full time, finally, at Croke Park. It is finished, Kilkenny 2.37, Wexford 2.29. What a game.